Do you see me? I'm continuing from last video. I'm now from underneath the car. And in the previous video, I don't think I mentioned that I didn't see actually this. So I'm not, hopefully you can see here. You can see some of the materials from <laughs> inside the coupling. I thought it, this was going, going uh, was fine, that I can use this again. But this is definitely where the sound sound uh, came from when I was driving. Yeah, I will get it out and then we can have a look at it. Yesterday, I removed this, the bolts from, sorry, it's a bit early. So I removed the bolt, which is between drive shaft and this coupling. This side is towards the differential in the rear, and this is where the drive shaft from the front is connected. So half of, it got six holes for bolts, three of these comes from the different, um, not the differential, from the drive shaft. It goes from, like from the, not from the differential, I'm sorry, I fuck on more often. Again, three of these comes from the side, from the front side of this coupling. And it goes just like this, it goes through the coupling and then it connects to the differential, which is on in the back. And then the other three goes from the rear, mounts to the drive shaft from the front and as you can see on the video the one which comes is connected to the drive shaft is the one that broke loose so and these are the OEM bolts these are 10.9 I think it's strength in this bolt I, uh, the reason for this breaking is that uh, I have to I was driving with too aggressive setup these bolts are not made for this type of setup you know the the drive line in like the differential and the gearbox and none of this is actually made for <laughs> for this type of setup but uh, since we are modifying stock cars to become more race cars this is problems we we all en encounter i think that's the word from time to time also i thought that this coupling was going to be fine and I only would need to replace the bolts. As you can also see, parts of this got pretty messed up. And in the rear, like it's, uh, yeah. It's dented and not in the best of shape. Since, <laughs> since it's this type of car, um, I'm gonna have this thing on. I need, I, I don't want to use this one anymore. I mean, this would probably work fine if this is the only option and you have it on a stock Volkswagen Charan or something with, yeah, all wheel drive. But I have another one. I'm gonna use this one instead. It took some time for me to find this because I knew I had one and I have one for the front also and I think, I'm not sure, but I think I have bolts also so I'm gonna spend some time looking for bolts but I'm glad I have this one because this is they don't give this for free I mean it's not super expensive but you know if you can save some money since prices for everything has gone up it's nice to 
to not be a, have to spend money on something you, you already have. But bolts are not expensive, but hopefully I have some because then I would be able to, to mount the car back together today. When I took down the drive shaft, I needed also to remove to lower the exhaust on my car. So I just, and I had V-band all, all the way on the exhaust, so I just removed it in. I have one V-band, it's like under the bulkhead area, and I have one just before the rear differential. So I just removed them, lowered the exhaust down by the differential, lower drive shaft, and then made it more easy to uh, remove this coupling. I think I have, it's not super easy to take down the, this coupling because I think the, the drive shaft, you know, you have some adjustments kind of in the drive shaft. When you loose on the ground, you can you have some, I think when I deliver this to the shop, which shorten it because my drive shaft is from Audi S3 Mark 1 8 out like the engine and everything else and when I shorten it maybe it should have taken I don't know half of a centimeter more or something because it would make it more easy but you know live and learn I'm gonna look for bolts now and drink more coffee <laughs> not able to put the drive shaft back on. I'm going to take the differential just a bit down and angle it so I will hopefully be able to to kind of put the drive shaft and uh, to the differential puts all the bolts just a bit in put the differential up mounted again and then continue with the rest. now is uh, you know those four bolts in the on the mark IV uh, golf setup hull leg setup you got this bracket and four of these bolts to go in the rear of the differential I've been fighting with this for a few hours now at least uh, two two and a half or feels like ten um, and this is because this uh, the bracket, the weld on, not the weld on, the the part which are welded on, the rallies, the synchro rear subframe. Those don't. It's difficult to get them lined up when differential is kind of. I wanted to put the differential on the subframe from underneath. It's very difficult, and usually I have just mounted the differential on the subframe when everything was off the car um, so yeah I finally got uh, because one of the bolts is uh, it's like very difficult it's always been very difficult and I usually usually I uh, like when when everything is mounted I forget how difficult it is and when I start to do this job, I get reminded how difficult it is and I have a plan to modify this rear plate some somewhat modify it or you know to drill out the holes so it will be easier next time but I you know <laughs> I always forget it but so now the threads on this bolt this is one of the bolts which we use we use so you probably 
recognize this bolt. Maybe, probably, so. I'm gonna try to, to make the threads a bit better. If not, I'm just gonna buy a new one. Shit, it's been, uh, it's been uh, many hours now. And I haven't filmed because I've been fucking pissed. So what I have to have to do is take the rear differential down to angle, uh, to be able to mount the, the drive shaft from the front to get it, yeah. So I took everything down, mounted the differential and mounted the drive shaft from the front to the differential and then was gonna put everything back up. And when I, this, when I tried to take it up, this is when things stopped kind of. Uh, and this is what I've been fighting an uphill battle, it feels like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm rambling and I'm very tired and hungry and I'm gonna do something about it. So now it's been around 30 minutes. I haven't been sleep uh, I haven't been sleeping, I have not been eating. I did anything with my hunger, but I managed to uh, Yeah, I'm not the only one with uh, problems today. I think this will take some time. I will, we will talk later. Just wanted to show you something in case I missed it when it's gonna pass by, but outside the workshop, uh, I can clearly see a 1.9 TDI. Now I'm finally gonna eat something, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself because I don't remember what I said in each clip because it is like 30 minutes or one hour between each clip and it's been a lot of struggling this evening. Next part is to mount, to tighten the bolts between the drive shaft, the hardy coupling and the rear differential uh, because they are just hand tightened at the moment and then mount the, in the middle of the drive shaft mount the drive shaft to the car then it's to mount the exhaust then put on the tires one of the tires this one to the rear fingers crossed and hopefully then take out the car go for a drive just to check that everything is working yeah jesus it's so uh, go custom they said it will be fun they said F fucking liars fucking liars people who tell you to go custom they probably haven't done it or it's cool but it's it's an uphill battle you gotta have patience Pretty sure it was a TDI with a, with a tune. Finally, back together, but is the sound gone? At this moment, I'm just happy that I managed to to mount the the diff, the rear differential back on the subframe. But <laughs> let's hope the the sound is gone.
fucking bright. Ah, just a moment. Can you see me now? Like this? The interior light in this car is not, it's not the best. This is all I have. But if I put my phone up, something like, like so, yeah. Okay, I will stop the car. So maybe you will be able to hear me. Good news, everybody. Uh, after nine hours, no, not nine hours. Eight hours and yeah, close, to, very close to nine hours. I'm able to. The sound is gone. Uh, at least, <laughs> at least for now. I just like what I did was I drove out the, the workshop, like back and forward, and usually where I always heard the sound. This. Uh, the sound I was talking about in my uh, Mexico video uh, video link here, I think. It's um, this, this sound is actually gone, and also, so this this sound is gone. Um, at least for now, uh, I hope <laughs> I hope it will will stay this way. Next thing I will at not attack tackle is. I need this, um, I don't know what it's called, it's like, uh, we call it uh, in Norwegian, centrerings thing, it's like uh, to make the wheel, it's like plastic thing, which you put between the wheel and the hub, to make the wheel center on the hub, center hub rings, I guess it will be, <laughs> I need this for, uh, for the car, and um, I think this is the reason, the, Hopefully, I mentioned this in previous video because the the wheel, uh, the car was very shaking more than a Mark One should. That's important. More than a Mark One should. When I had my uh, my Mark One Caddy pickup, it was shaking, but the amount which you would uh, would uh, expect from a Mark One with uh, low profile tires and all, yeah, and such. Uh, but the car was shaking more than it should. And I think it's the front right wheel. Well, I know it's the front right wheel, front right wheel, but maybe also the rest. So that's the, the next thing. The differential was a pain to oh, to mount. And now I'm driving with um, about should be 70 in the front and 30 in the rear. The power distribution. Uh, I will maybe try to get. Uh, 60 in the front and 40 in the rear. I think that was about what I had in my Audi S3. Somewhere between what I have now and 60 in the front and 40 in the rear because that, I think that would be a quite nice setup uh, for this car with uh, with this short wheelbase and everything. So I'm sitting now on the outside the workshop because there is a 90 in the driveway and I'm waiting for uh, for it to be finished mounting some stuff. I'm gonna answer some uh, some comments which I got on my previous video and my two videos ago. I filmed my previous video same day that two videos ago was published. So the two videos ago video has some comments which I would like to answer in like first next. <laughs> Fuck man, my language is making it more advanced than it should. You know, I, if someone comments on this video, which I can answer in the next video, I would like to not to wait a long time. But I will answer some of them. Probably not today. It will be in this video. Yeah. I don't need to tell you. I will answer them. This is the first comment. Uh, in the video, I talked a bit about my impression, impressions of uh, regulations and stuff in the US. My impression that color, like Florida there is like free for all and California is like on the opposite side of the spectrum. So here is one comment. All depends on where you live in the US. Some states but mostly cities and densely populated areas will have strict emissions and safety regulations. Then there is the age of the car. That also has an impact. Not only on what you can do but how much it can be driven. 
etc. And yeah, MK1s make a ton of noise when modified heavily and have zero interior. Yeah, okay, so on the last part, Mark 1 makes a lot of noise. Yeah, that's uh, my experience too. As I said, uh, last year I had uh, a Mark 1 Caddy, which was noisy, but yeah, my Golf is a lot more. Um, mostly city and dense population areas have strict emissions and safety regulations. Okay, yeah, well, I <laughs> can't argue with that. In Norway, it's not, uh, it's the same all over Norway. We don't have, uh, we have, we have the same rules all across Norway. I mean, but we are not that many people, so. Next comment. The US is an interesting place for sure. A fake the rules in California have to do mainly with snob, not so much to do with safety. Check out what happens with 1300 HP and tiny little brakes when the throttle sticks. You could never register such a car in Europe and that's a good thing. I hope you enjoyed Mexico and I hope you got to enjoy some boost pressure. Okay, so California is, this is a comment on the same video, same my same uh, talk, speech, whatever. Uh, so California have mainly with smog, not so much to do with safety. Okay, I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this video about this 1003. You can. It is fully possible. I'm, I mean, it is possible to to have um, something home built in Europe, like. Um, but everything needs to be. Like everything, if you want to do it by the book, everything needs to be documented when it comes to brakes, to harness, to everything needs to be have some papers and documents to it. At least, I'm not the expert, far from expert, but that's kind of how it needs to be. It's um, definitely people who <laughs> cars like this, or you know, with the same amount of power and such on roads, at least that I've heard of. I can imagine, I mean, I don't know anyone. All people I know is following the rules and of course. And yeah, I, I didn't, uh, I haven't uh, enjoyed some boost pressure since my car is not fully tuned. It's uh, got like a bass tune and I couldn't, I could, my tuner said I shouldn't rev it more than 3000 RPM. But uh, the sound was just perfect. Uh, well, it was so good sound. Since I have the stock turbo, the boost pressure comes on really on really low RPM. So I could hear the turbo like, you know, this sound. It was quite nice. Next comment is also about this uh, my uh, my talk about uh, United States I live in Florida you are free to do whatever you can register a box if you want to loud exhausts are common it's good and bad there's the good sounding exhaust and then there's the exhausts that make your ears bleed and sound like crap <laughs> okay okay this is uh, this is my this is what I expected from Florida then I got a comment, I'm just going to read it. Which drive shaft do you use? I use, uh, I already answered in the comment, but I use the drive shaft from Audi S3 Mark 1, which is the same as the Golf Mark 4 and the Audi TT Mark 1. And you know, all, <laughs> pretty much all VAG cars with trans mounted and four wheel drive, basically all use the same. Some of them are different lengths though, but the same and then last one hi what happened if I remove the viscous joint from front wheel drive to rear what happened if I made fixed joint from front to rear axis on the synchro I guess this was I actually I don't know I if if you do it please uh, please have a camera nearby and send the video to me I guess I'm not experienced with the with the synchro and I don't have, I haven't read a lot about it. My expression is that the synchro can only take, I've heard like 20 or 30% of the power to the rear, like maximum. And so I guess what would happen if you would just break it? 
but you know be the first to try send me the video okay thank you for watching till next time bye